Hi everyone and welcome back to Linda Libra Loca. Today I wanted to talk about the brand The Inky List, which I have been using for the better part of a year now. They were released in the UK back in summer 2018, but now they are available in Sephora in the US, sadly not in Sephora Germany. And because they are a great affordable brand with a brand message that I stand behind, I wanted to give you an overview of all the 20 products they do and tell you which product is probably best suited to your skin type. This is not a sponsored video, I bought all the products myself, but I generally think it's great skincare. If you don't know me yet, hi, welcome, my name's Anne, I'm a doctor and a beauty lover and I'm passionate about sharing beauty tips and tricks for people with more mature skin. When they first launched, they had 15 products, all of which were under 10 pounds. Now they have 20 products, all of which are under 15 pounds. So basically you get great skincare for the price of two or three coffee to go. And the brand's philosophy is they want to break through the skincare market, make effective skincare ingredients accessible to everyone, both due to a low price point and due to explaining and educating yourself about skincare. They tend to focus on one star ingredient in their formula that has a few supporting ingredients so you can actually mix and match your skincare every day depending on your skincare's needs and don't have to use one thing that contains everything no matter if you need it this day or not. Please note that I have not tried all the 20 products myself. Some are just not targeted at my skin type so I refrain from purchasing them but I still can give you a great overview. One of the new things they launched with is cleansers, or one cleanser to be precise, and it's a BHA cleanser, a salicylic acid cleanser, which is of course targeted at more oily, acne-prone, congested skin. Looking at the ingredient list, it contains really gentle surfactants, it contains salicylic acid, which exfoliates inside the pores, so it helps you unclog your pores, and is oil-soluble, so it works better on oily skin because it can really penetrate inside the pores, and it contains zinc, which also helps in oil control. I personally have not tried it and I don't think I will purchase it just because I like to keep my active separate and I like my cleansers to be suitable for use around the eyes. But if you are either a teenager or if you have really oily acne prone skin and want to use a gentle cleanser but still treat your congestion, this might be a great one for you to try. They do offer acid separately and they offer quite a variety. The first one they came out with was a glycolic acid toner and that features 10% glycolic acid. For comparison, the Pixi Glow Tonic has 5% glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is the smallest acid molecule, so it really penetrates deeply into your skin and helps sloughing off the dead skin cells that make your skin look dull and uneven. So it helps with dull skin, tired skin, especially as we age because cell turnover decreases and we need something to help our skin get rid of the upper layer of dead skin cells that you just don't shed as easily as they did when we were in our 20s. Other than glycolic acid, it also contains witch hazel, which is an astringent, so it makes your pores appear smaller and helps with oil control. It contains alcohol for stabilization, so if you have an issue with alcohol, I personally don't, then this might not be for you. It does not contain any extra soothing ingredients, so I personally would limit usage to once, maybe twice a week, depending on your skin type. The acid more suited to oily skin is their BHA serum, their salicylic acid serum. I personally have not tried it, but this is on my to-purchase list. It's one of the newer products that they came out with, and as I said before, salicylic acid exfoliates inside the pore. It is oil soluble as opposed to glycolic acid which is water soluble. So if your skin is more oily and you need something to get inside the pores, exfoliate there, this is a great one. I couldn't find anywhere how high the percentage of salicylic acid is. My guess is 2% because this is the maximum that you are allowed to use in over-the-counter products. It also contains some hyaluronic acid, so it is hydrating, and zinc PCA, which helps with oil control. So great for soothing and cleaning oily, congested, probably acne-prone skin. I personally would not use a salicylic acid every day either, but in my experience, you can use it twice or three times a week, depending on what other products you use. They also do a lactic acid serum. Lactic acid is a much bigger molecule than glycolic acid, so it sits 
further on the upper layer of the skin, doesn't penetrate in as deeply, so it isn't as irritating and is much more suited for sensitive skin. It does basically the same as glycolic acid does, even out skin tone, help with hyperpigmentation, help with dull looking skin, but on top of that is hydrating. The serum does contain 10% lactic acid as well as hyaluronic acid and glycerin, so it is really hydrating, but still on the more intense side, so again, not something that I would recommend you use daily. The last acid is their AHA toner, which claims to contain AHAs, which are basically lactic acid and glycolic acid, but derived from natural sources in terms of fruit extract or sugarcane extract as natural source of glycolic acid. This is much more gentle than using just a dedicated glycolic acid product. I haven't tried this one. My problem with these kinds is you never know how much you get if you use a fruit extract as your source because yeah, if I get a 10% glycolic acid serum, it's 10% glycolic acid in there. If I use a fruit extract, this can vary. So it is a really gentle form of alpha hydroxy acids, probably great for beginners and it is combined with enzymatic exfoliants, so it has another exfoliating component. I think it depends on your personal preference. If you want a really gentle, more natural based one, this alpha hydroxy acid serum might be for you. If you want kind of a stronger exfoliation, I think depending on your skin type, the glycolic, the lactic or the salicylic acid serum would be a better choice. Moving on to actives. And the first one I want to make and it's finally one that I have in my collection, is the retinol. Retinol has been all over the place and it's a great ingredient both for acne prone skin and for skin that wants to fight the signs of premature aging because retinol increases cell turnover, it increases collagen production, it basically helps the skin get back to renewing itself at the pace that it did when you were younger. Retinols are kind of a difficult or confusing topic because there are many different kinds which work different in the skin. Carol Hirons is currently doing a retinol series which is I think at the moment five videos long so go check that out if you want to learn more. It is important to note that this does not contain retinol as in retinol but it contains encapsulated retinol which has to be slowly released. They say that this means it's gentler and it works over a longer period of time and I'm not going to argue with that but all the studies that have been made have been made with retinol and it's probably safe to assume that encapsulated retinol does work the same way as usual retinol but we can't be completely sure. And on top of that, it contains granactive retinoid, which is not a retinol, but it's a kind of sister product that is said to be more gentle too, but again has the same issues with not as much data to back up its claims. In terms of effectiveness, this is not the gentlest over-the-counter retinol product I have tried. Um, the Pixi Retinol Tonic, for example, is much more gentle and probably better suited for people that are just starting out. I'd say this is for over-the-counter products a mid-strength retinol, which also contains squalane and phospholipids, so it has barrier repairing ingredients inside to help minimize the irritation even further and contains some peptides that are part of the matrix complex. So if you want to fight the signs of premature aging, I think this is a great product to try. Second active, this is their vitamin C product. Vitamin C again fights hyperpigmentation, increases collagen production and is an antioxidant. So I personally like to have it in my skincare routine. There are different kinds of vitamin C. This is L-ascorbic acid, which is the most potent and most unstable form. This is, however, very stable because L-ascorbic acid reacts with water and this is purely a silicone formula. So it has a really nice texture applied to the skin. It is stable. You don't have to worry about it going off, but it contains 30% L-ascorbic acid. I use prescription strength retinol, so my skin is not really extra sensitive, but not the toughest that it used to be. And this one is too strong for me. On top of that, 20% L-ascorbic acid is kind of the maximum intake capacity that your skin has. So anything that's on top can't really be taken inside the skin and is wasted, but just causes irritation. So I'm personally not the biggest fan. I like the texture, it is really effective, but I wish they would have made it a little less 
in tins, like 20% instead of 30%. They do recommend mixing it in with something else, like the Hyaluronic Acid Serum or your moisturizer, and I have been doing this to finish this product, but I'd rather have a product that I do not have to mix. Then we have the Collagen Serum, which is basically a serum that contains the Matrix 3000 pro, uh, peptide, which is a peptide that aims to increase collagen production, hydrate the skin, even out the fine line, and just make your skin more bouncy and youthful. I have a whole video on peptides that I'm going to link, where I explain more about the Matrix peptide, but it is a great one and if you want to have peptides in your skincare routine but aren't sure and don't want to spend a lot of money because we still are trying to figure out if and how much they work, this is a great one to try. I use this one and the, the Ordinary Buffet one interchangeably. Then we have the Q10 serum. If you don't know what Q10 is, Q10 is ubiquinone, which is an antioxidant and it is not talked about as much as vitamin C, but it is as well researched and as effective in terms of preventing free radical damage and evening out the skin cell tone, increasing collagen production. This claims to be a serum, but for my more oily combination skin in the summer, it works perfectly as a last step because it contains some emollients, amazing under any other products, great texture, really hydrating. I wholeheartedly recommend this one for your antioxidant boost, especially if you don't get along with vitamin C that good because your skin is more on the sensitive side. And this one contains some peptides from the Matrix U complex as well, so it's basically killing two birds with one stone. And I wanted to include the caffeine serum in here. It's actually an eye serum, but I wish they would make it in a bigger bottle. I would apply it all over my face. The main ingredient as the same gives away is caffeine which helps with deep puffing your under eye area and I don't usually suffer from puffy eyes but if I've cried the night before because I watched a really sad episode of Game of Thrones or something like that I know that if I apply this one I won't wake up with these ugly I cried the night before puffy eyes. I usually tend to use it in the mornings because it's really hydrating, plumps my skin, that's great, it plumps the skin while depuffing the skin, amazing. And the caffeine really helps with minimizing the appearance of my dark circles. It of course does not make them go away, but they are less obvious. It also contains peptides, so my under eye area gets a boost of collagen stimulation as well. You're supposed to use something else like an eye cream on top, but I usually don't bother and just use this one. Moving on to hydration, this is their hyaluronic acid and I have tried many many budget hyaluronic acid serums. This one as many others these days contains several molecular weights of hyaluronic acid and this is beneficial because the different molecular weights penetrate to a different level through the skin so you, they make your skin plumb both on the surface as well as a little deeper inside and most of the budget versions that I've tried are sticky. This one is not, absolutely not a trace of stickiness. It feels like a high-end hyaluronic acid serum. Hyaluronic acid is an ingredient that everyone should have in their skincare routine because it helps plump the skin, even out fine lines and keeps the skin hydrated and bouncy. And you really can't do better for that price. The second hydrating ingredient, and I've personally not tried that yet, is polyglutamic acid. And polyglutamic acid is not an acid as in a chemical exfoliant, but more like in hyaluronic acid. It is a very strong humectant that's naturally occurring in the skin. Like all the good stuff, it diminishes in our skin as we age. It is said to be stronger in terms of water binding capacity than hyaluronic acid, so it really supercharges hydration in your skin. And it's a slightly larger molecule, so it stays on the skin surface and really attracts the plumpness and hydration where you want it, where it evens out the fine lines. You can pair it with hyaluronic acid if your skin is really dehydrated and I'm looking forward to trying it and see how it reacts with my skin. Moving on to moisturizers, I have not tried any of these myself, but there are two that I'm really interested in. The first one is their Sink Oxide Cream Moisturizer and this one is kind of difficult for me because if you read the description on the Cult Beauty website, it claims to work as a sunscreen. But it does not say sunscreen on the packaging and it does not say sunscreen on the tube. The thing is, it does contain sunscreens. It does contain zinc oxide, which is great for UVA and UVB protection. And it does contain octinoxato or uvinyl, which is a UVB protection. So it is a combination of both physical and chemical or organic and inorganic sunscreen, but has no SPF claim 
on the packaging, which means that it has not yet undergone proper testing. So I personally would not yet under rely on it for my sun protection. Other than these sun protecting ingredients, it does contain shea butter and a few humectants, so it's probably a really nice moisturizer even without the added SPF. It might be that they're still in the phase of getting it tested for the sunscreen properties, may repackage it once the claim is through. The second one, again a new one and one that I'm really interested in, is their multibiotic one. If you have been in, on YouTube this year, I bet you have heard about probiotics, prebiotics, even postbiotics. It claims the multibiotic moisturizer is crammed full of good bacteria, aka probiotics. And this is kind of where I get a little, uh, well, no, well, probably it is, but these are not live bacteria. With all the preservatives in your product, and this one does contain preservatives, and with the regulations, you are not allowed to have live bacteria in your product. Maybe there is bacteria in there, maybe there's even good bacteria in there, but it's dead. And that bacteria will not form a protective film as in skin's microbiome on your skin. What it can do, and this is where prebiotics come in, is provide nourishment for the good bacteria on your skin. This is again a field where much more research is needed because which bacteria is good and which is bad and which products actually do promote the growth of the bacteria that we want is still unclear, but I don't think it hurts. To back up these claims, it contains both yogurt powder and brightenul. And the brightenul is trihydroxybenzoic acid alpha glucoside that is converted by bacteria that live on our skin into trihydroxybenzoic acid, and I'm sorry I have to read that from screen, which is a well-researched but notoriously unstable tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which helps with preventing melanin production, which helps against hyperpigmentation. Now, obviously I can't tell whether the bacteria on my skin is going to activate this one, but again, and that's the great thing about the inky list, for that price, it doesn't hurt to give it a go. And the other ingredients, humectants, a few emollients, a few exclusives, make it sound like a great moisturizer. So this one is on my list. Then there's the turmeric cream moisturizer. Turmeric has been used in DIY skincare for a long time because of its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits. And this is one aimed to soothe your skin and fight free radical damage. The key ingredients are, of course, turmeric root extract. It also contains coconut oil, which can be problematic for some, but they aim to have a low level where most people don't react to it with breakouts, glycerin, squalane, and vitamin E. It sounds like a really nice, soothing, antioxidant-rich moisturizer, but if you have really reactive and inflamed skin, this might be a great one to try. Then we have the hemp oil cream moisturizer. Again, hemp seed oil or CBD is one of the up and coming ingredients in skincare. It is rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, helping to restore the skin's barrier, helping to repair the skin and is soothing. This one interests me a little bit more, despite the fact that it contains coconut oil, because other than the hemp seed oil, it also has green tea leaf extract, which I really like in my skincare, so I might purchase this one eventually. But the one that's most interesting for me is the heptapeptide. We are again on the peptide thing, and the heptapeptide is one that claims to help again with collagen production, plumping out the skin and getting rid of fine lines. And this is a pretty silicone heavy formula. So it will have an instant blurring effect like a silicone primer. If it has on top a peptide that helps long-term, only time will tell, but it sounds like the perfect primer or last step before your makeup application, especially if you have dehydrated and mature skin and struggle with your foundation settling into your pores and fine lines. So even if it just works as a primer, this is one that I'm excited to try. Moving on to their face oils, I did of course purchase the rosehip oil because rosehip oil is a great all-rounder oil that I love no matter what state my skin is in. It works for sensitive skin, for dry skin, and for oily skin. It's not the most lightweight oil, but it works perfectly fine on my skin at night. Rosehip oil is rich in essential fatty acids. It works as antioxidants. It's really soothing on the skin. It is also a natural source of vitamin A, but same as with the fruit enzymes, I would personally not rely on getting an amount that's big enough to really make a difference in terms of 
preventing premature aging on my skin. This is one that you could probably use when you're in your 20s, working up to your 30s, but once you have passed 35, I recommend you switch to a dedicated retinol product. But even without that, this is a great all-rounder oil that even sensitive skins can use. They also have a Scalana oil, plant-derived Scalana, because there are still some products out there that get theirs from Shark Lover. And it's a really lightweight oil. It's an oil that I like in my skincare routine. I haven't tried theirs yet. Scalana is part of your natural skin's barrier and again decreases with age or with damaged skin barrier. So it's great to replenish over time. It's a really lightweight oil, so you can use it even for oily skin without being a totally greasy mess. Last product, whoa, that was long, is their Kaolin face mask. Kaolin is a clay which aims to draw out oils and impurity and it's one of the gentle clays that is supposed to work great for dry skins. It has also aloe juice for soothing, centella asiatica extract for repairing and some plant oils to replenish the skin. So I think it's great for even drier skins that don't get along with regular clay mask. I personally have a cheap clay mask that I keep coming back to and don't feel the need to try yet another one. But if you want a gentle one or if you just want something that has this really sleek and lovely packaging, I bet this is a great one to try. My top picks for more mature skin would be, depending on your skin type, either the glycolic acid toner or the salicylic acid toner. If your skin is really sensitive, the lactic acid toner, so one of these acids. Then the retinol for some extra anti-aging boost. The caffeine cream, great for your eyes if they tend to get puffy and show fine lines and wrinkles. Then, of course, for any skin type, the Hyaluronic Acid Serum, because Hyaluronic is just great to have in your routine. The Collagen and probably the Hepta Peptide and the Multibiotic Moisturizer. But the last two I have not personally tried. And with that sum up, I'm going to link a few other videos on the screen that I think might interest you. Tell me in the comments below if you have tried anything from this brand, what your experiences were. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'm going to see you all very soon with another video. Bye.